Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is part two of a three-part series on the Report Wizard. It, two weeks ago, my How Time Does Fly, but just two weeks ago, Matthew did an overview of the wizard and the different tools that are available to you. And he also created a report, a simple report for using the tools available. And today he's going to pick up right where he left off last time. I know that he wants you to put any questions you have into the chat box for me to get to him. Matthew, tell us what you're covering today. Great. Um, well, we uh, did um, oh, back up a uh, couple of things I wanted to get to last time, but we ran out of time was emailing and scheduling. So I thought I would start with emailing today. And so if I go to this report that uh, that was the one we were working on last time um, over here on output is is a choice for email and the reason why i've been working off this report is well it's going to become fairly obvious here soon but anyway i think that the the probably the mo the best choice in emailing is going to be a pdf either that or you can change to you know where you're having the excel file with all the data so um if you are wanting to change the uh, type of what's being outputted, uh, just go in here and change the, the type. You've got the word, um, CSV if you need CSV, XLSX, XLS. Um, XLS is going to be faster than XLSX, um, and you're gonna want data format. Now full format shows you exactly like what shows out on the screen. Um, so that's that's not just the data. Um, if you're just wanting the raw data to work with, you're you're wanting the data format. Uh, but anyway, you, the reason why you'll want to choose XLSX is if you've got a memo field or something like that in in the um, uh, in the data. Otherwise, you will want just an XLS because that's going to be faster for you in generating and things like that. But anyway, you got open office, all that stuff. So uh, PDF, now one of the choices, well, okay, so if I want to just send the full report of all the instructors to someone, um, you just type in their email uh, at this point. So aceware.com. I mentioned last time that it is pulling your settings from manager to to send emails with so you don't have to worry about that um, carbon copy blind carbon copy you know, put in a subject message here is your instructor listing um, so simple message or you can be as complex as you want to be this goes on and on and on as far down as you want to go if you want to password protect the file you can do that when this is any format not just PDF uh, you could password protect the file for the recipient to then um, you'll have to share the password with them in another way but um, I would definitely not recommend putting the password to the file in the message if you want the file to remain secure. But anyway, um, so back to, okay, so at this point I can just hit um, um, ah, where's the output button? Um, uh, I can hit send at this point and it's going to to send a check now what if let's say that this report i'm wanting to send to each instructor here's the listing of courses for you well there's an option here output each group as a separate email and okay i need to get rid of chuck out of the two line for this to work output and then get email address from since i've got the grouping in 
or the instructor, um, this is going to, to separate the report into each instructor and then each each email address that I have in the report is now going to get just their listing. So that's kind of the reason why I I wanted to do this example was this is you know similar to generating faculty contracts in student manager is doing something like this. Um, now I think the power of this well, and I wanted to keep it kind of simple to do this, but so the power of this is in student manager, you know, we've only got a few options for you in generating PDFs to, to people, um, invoices, um, uh, certificates, and faculty contracts. Well, in the report wizard, you can have all sorts of things, and it doesn't have to be to faculty. It has, you know, you can be to the different names in the report, or um, um, what else do you have uh, email addresses for firms? If you're doing a firm uh, listing, you can have that in there. Um, in any different email address field in the system you can pull from and then generate from here. So that's kind of the basics of emailing. Uh, you can put in a carbon copy and blind carbon copy with this um, as well, but just the, the two field goes away. Um, yeah, or if you do want, you know, send this to Chuck, you can carbon copy everybody. Um, with an email address. So either way you want to do it. Um, any questions over emailing? I'm not seeing any. Carry on. Great. So the next thing is scheduling a report. Um, so that's going to be under tools. Uh, scheduled report. So this is going to allow the, the system will run the report on a regular basis and do something with that report. So if I just go into scheduled report, uh, it's automatically going to say run report and then the name of the report as the schedule name. Uh, if you've got some other convention you'd rather use, you can do this. Uh, or you can do, do whatever you want. You can change it uh, as you need to. Um, well, Sharon's an early riser. She likes to have the report at 5 a.m. So I'm going to change this to 5. Um, she wants this daily because she's that on top of things. So, um, the, oh, the run report with no records. So this would be, let's say this is at the beginning where you haven't uh, started, you know, it's the beginning of the semester, you haven't started putting uh, courses in if you want the report to still generate with just no records and that still gets sent um, you can have that happen um, probably i don't know kind of a waste of an email in my opinion but then again with the way you know sharon's on top of things so she wants to make sure she gets you know that report even if it has nothing in it so uh depending on what it the other person wants, you can set that. Next, so we're doing every day uh, starting, yeah, might as well start today. Well, except it's already past 5 a.m., so might as well set it for tomorrow, um, but that doesn't really matter. I could still say today, but it's still the first run time would be tomorrow. But anyway, uh, start date. Where do we want the output to? Well, I could send it to the printer. Um, you know, when Sharon comes in, she can just grab the report off the printer. Um, if we we do have a shared drive here in the office, if we want to put this in, in a shared location, um, and then she just knows to go out to that shared location to get it. But I think more useful is going to be sending her an email. 
and I'm going to turn off the uh, output each individual at the moment. Notice it brought in all the settings I, I was playing with over here in the output, but um, yeah, we're, we're doing a different purpose, so uh, we can uh, turn some of that stuff off. But uh, anyway, that's part of the intuitiveness of the program is, hey, it's trying to, to pick up where you're leaving things off. So send it send it to Sharon daily. Um, get this report message. Probably want to put a subject here. Um, um, I don't know instructor listing. Next. Um, so the next thing it's going to ask for is your login and password to your computer. This is so that when you've got your computer in sleep mode or you know it's it's logged you out at the end of the day it can log you back in run the report send it log you back out and and yeah so that's the reason why it's going to ask for login and, and password here it's already pulled it in from windows so i don't have to re-enter it uh next thing if the scheduled report fails due to an error an email can be sent notifying them that the that it failed so yeah i want to be notified when that happens and that way you know maybe there is something you know mail mail server goes down or you know something has changed you know i don't know something has blocked the report from running um, maybe I went in and tweaked the report the other day and added a field and now, yeah, it's uh, kind of botched things up from preventing the report from running. Or it could be that there's some bad data in the system and, you know, it's trying to pull that bad data but, and, yeah, things go haywire. Um, you, you never know. So definitely get, yeah, have this, having this option is a great thing to do so finish and this is going to actually it's going to go in two different places your windows scheduled tasks and here in the report wizard scheduled tasks it is going to show in here um last ran on never because we haven't hit the 5 a.m tomorrow morning yet um but uh, otherwise it is going to show you when's the last time it's going to run the result, if there was an error message, you know, things like that. Uh, you can sort, if you've got multiple um, um, scheduled reports in here, you can uh, sort by what's coming up next. Um, creating a diagnostics file, that's gonna help me in helping you figure out when the things fail. So yeah, leave that checked. Um, so I'm not actually going to want Sharon to actually be getting a daily email from me with this report because she's, yeah, it's from a demo. She's not going to know what to do with it. So I'm going to delete this so she doesn't get it. But anyway, that's kind of the basics of scheduling a report. It's it's really, it's running the report for you, emailing it, or or however you're wanting to pass it to another person. Any questions there? doing okay carry on Good. all right so the next thing so finally we're starting agenda for this session uh next thing i want to do is start doing some things with charting and i think um, i think this is one of the biggest powerful features of of the report wizard um you know student manager you can create reports all day long you know modify your regular reports but charting, it doesn't do so well. So I'm going to start a new uh, chart report here. And let's call this, I don't know, um, course enrollment. Oh, let's do by subject. Let's see. I think that's how I want to do this. Do I want to? Yeah, I want to start here. Okay, so I'm I'm doing. 
I'm I'm answering the question of 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 what do I want to see what data so that's the course enrollment and over what what do I want to show it um, so it's kind of I'm kind of show the the y axes and x axes if you could think of a regular um, um, t graph um, the, that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, although I think I'm going to do a pie chart for this. Um, so course enrollment, let's go to the course. And enrollment count, add that in. And while I'm here, subject. So there's going to be limited data being shown on this report. You can show multiple things, but I'm, I'm trying to keep things simple for this example. Um, it kind of shows you what things are going to look like here in step three of the chart layout, but it's just kind of for a visual res re representation. Um, it's also automatically put in my fields into the y-axis and x-axis and I think it just pulls whichever is the first one you put in into the y-axis and the second one you pull in into the x-axis. This might be reversed to what you want so you make sure you just double it. Um, also when I hover over this you see something here summary sum. If I go to the properties it's it's recognized this field as a numeric, so it is going to assume that you want to sum this field. Um, you know, if you're wanting to see averages, um, I don't know, you probably wouldn't want to see a count of a numeric field. If you put in a character field, um, say if I put in registration ID or something like that, it's going to realize that you're wanting to count um, or maybe even name ID would be a better example. So it's wanting it'll it'll count for you the number of names in a given subject code um, if you did that. But we're wanting to see enrollment. Um, so yeah, sum is going to be great here. Um, you could do other things, you know, um, um, do paid uh, except that gets into the formulas which I'm going to show you in net, uh, in uh, two weeks um, so yeah that's kind of why I'm sticking with enrollment count at this time but anyway there there's other things you could show with this um, and formatting if you're needing to use, default formatting usually works so um, um, yeah, because we're not doing dollar amount here, but if we were doing amount due, amount paid, um, putting in the dollar symbol probably would help. Comments is just for notes. Um, so at this point I could hit preview, but it is, it's just gonna do a bar graph and I don't want a bar graph. Um, here on step four, this gets into, getting into the nitty gritty of the chart itself. What are you wanting to show? Um, you've got different um, options as far as doing an air, uh, area chart, line chart, bar chart, column chart, donut, uh, pie chart, pie chart. I want to do a pie chart. Um, slices, yes. Um, yeah, you got some options as far as if you're if you're wanting to to show certain specifics there. Um, you know, yeah, and colors. I really, to me, the pastels aren't that great. Uh, classic. Eh. I like the cool. I don't know about anybody else. Grayscale. Probably, if you're going to be printing this a lot. Grayscale is going to be great. Um, modern, yeah, it's okay. But anyway, you could play with different color schemes. Um, I'm going to go with cool. Um, um, 
yeah, you could play with this more to do, you know, some of the backgroundy things uh, to get the the theme in here. Um, so things like that, titles. Um, really, that's going to be more your your bar chart. Um, making sure your x axis and y axis has the the um, uh, proper labels to it, or you can change the labels. Um, since this is a pie chart, it, it's really just giving us the title uh, as far as changing it. Um, the whole axes um, uh, tab here is grayed out because it, pie charts don't have an axes. Uh, legend, you can do some things with the legend, especially getting rid of this ugly yellow. Come on. Uh, okay, why isn't it letting me change that? Oh, because it's set to the theme. Uh, if I didn't have the theme, I could change the color. Um, but because this is built into that specific theme, it's not going to let me change it. So, uh, but anyway, in, normally you'd have have that um, value at right. Yes. Because this, so this would, your subject code followed by the value on the right side. That's usually how you'd want to see it. Um, you can change it left value, then the, the subject. You can also put in, if you want to see percentages. And really with, with a pie chart, percentage is kind of, you're seeing it. You, the 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 amount of the wedge, that's the percentage. So um, that, that's kind of more of a visual thing. I want to see the hard value, not a percent. So um, you can do things with 3D manipulation, all sorts of other things here. Um, it, yeah, I'm going to preview it. Let's preview it. So in my demo, I've only got, um, you know, these. 10 or so subject codes that actually have um, actually communication. Does communication have, where's communication? Let's see, this is computer. Ah, it's camp. Business, so this is art business camp. So communication does not have any enrollments. So its wedge is gone. Um, but everything else is showing here. Um, which you could have, we could filter it out so that we, we don't see those. Hold on. It split this into two pages. Aha, I've got a bunch of others here uh, showing. So it's split this into two different pie charts. So the first 10 or so on one page and the second 10 on a separate page. Well, I don't know if I want that. Um, well, part of it is we could filter out the ones that have zero and that would help because this, I mean, it's only showing five of the 10 because there's a bunch with zero. Um, so filtering out that would, would help. Um, let's see what else I think. Da -da 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 -da, other. Points per page. Changing the points per page would allow me to get everything on one page. So if I go to 20, preview that. Notice it, it, it now that I've ran it once, it, it updated it on the screen there. But um, so now we're down to one page. All, well, not all of them because the zeros aren't actually shown in here. But anyway, all all my subjects are at least listed here and then uh, yeah so we've got things showing um so as you can see 
biggest in the demo, Aceware is the biggest subject code. Not too surprised there, because that's on most of the courses. So, um, so that kind of, you can play with the different options, get different things going on here. Uh, but yeah, once, once, once you've previewed it once, this is going to try to keep a preview going uh, as you change other things. Um, um, as so, it's it is showing kind of your your data as as you're doing this. Um, next step is the filter. So just like in in student man or in the, the um, quick reports that we did, uh, being able to filter by the different things. Um, so I can do. Let's see if I filter out. Whoa jumped on me um no, 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 not account code enrollment count i haven't actually tried this so this this might be interesting uh greater than or equal uh, don't want equal i want greater than it is greater than zero let's see if that gets rid of that got rid of those other those subject codes that had zero enrollments. It's now completely not even showing in the legend. So that's a good thing. Uh, I think more though, we probably only want to show courses like in a current year. Uh, so I'm going to add another filter here real quick. Like, and it's exactly like um, you know what we saw two weeks ago. Um, but anyway, course code begins with 21. Get the current year. So it's automatically put an and in between those two conditions preview. Uh, so the numbers are a little bit different. It more or less looks the same because, well, we do a lot of duplication across years. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so it's dropped the number of the Aceware down to 71. Um, I don't think it got rid of any of the actual um, subject codes, but anyway, uh, yeah, you see visually representation of of what's going on in your database. So this is interesting, but what if I want to see a breakdown within a subject code? So. Let's build that real quick. Uh, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to copy this just so I can keep a lot of the same thing by subject by course code. Okay, so let's edit this. The big thing I'm going to change is instead of subject code in step two, get rid of that. We're instead going to put in um, course code. Next. Um, so it's gone back to the, the simple little graph. It did not automatically put in uh, course code into my X axis this time so i do need to manually drag it down uh, to get that uh, the other thing i need to do is filter uh, we're going to do subject code now we're we're only wanting to see for one subject code at a time why did that dinged in my ear. I don't know if that dinged in your guys' ear. Um, there, finally went. Okay, subject code equals value. Uh, I want to ask that one at runtime. So the, uh, the other two are not asked at runtime. This one is. So that way, when I run it, I can, I can be asked, 
which subject code do I want to see? So if I want to see Aceware, I can see that. So the Aceware has, um, again, it's put it into multiple pages because it has more than 20 courses. But now I can see per course what's going on. Maybe this one, you know, especially you guys with umpteen million course codes, a semester and a subject code, you will want to paginate this, um, you know, into multiple pages. So that can get a little tricky. Um, but so we're going to go a little more advanced at this point. So this was real quick and easy. Got that all done. We're going to come back here to the subject and edit uh, next on step wait no yeah x axis the subject code I can set there's a link tab on the x axis and I can link to another report what I want to run. So if I'm going down here to the webinar 2020, that new report where I have the subject or the uh, one subject and see the course codes, I can say okay. Whoop, that went away. Um, what it's going to to set up for you is it will pass from our parent report to the child report, the subject code. So what happens? Okay, so hit okay. If I preview this, shows the report with, with all my different subject codes. Let's pick a smaller one than, than Aceware. If I click, notice I've got, instead of a regular mouse, it's actually got a little finger pointer. If I click on computer here, I know it's computer because it's 20. Um, if I click on computer, it's going to run the other report. And now show me the three course codes that make up the 20 enrollments that were shown on the other report, how many were in each of those three course codes. So I've now linked these two reports. Now you could bounce back and forth, see how it uh, it left the original report here in in a tab of its own. Um, so now you've you've yeah, t t this is so cool. I love this. You could click on a different subject code and find out the detail of what's going on in that subject code and see it visually in in just one click. I mean, the the power here is yeah beyond. Um, I'm yeah, saying, beyond ooh, beyond ah. anything that can happen in student <laughs> management. Yeah. Cool. Um, any questions at this point? Nope. Carry on. Okay. So I'm going to close this, make sure I finish to save it. Um, next thing I wanted to show was gauges. Um, so this is kind of a specialized report. You know, a gauge on, you know, in in your car, you know, kind of the speedometer type thing. That's that's what I'm talking about as far as a gauge. You know, something kind of like this. Um, let's do enrollments. I don't know. Just call it enrollments. Next, go to course. Enrollments. Um, in with a gauge, there is no X and Y axes. It's just one axis. So I'm doing enrollment count next. Setting. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. So it, before in in the chart. This is where we would have the x axis and or y axis on top and x axis here at the bottom. Well, it's one axis, so you just get the one. The different thing here is a goal value. 
Um, so that's kind of where where do you want to see enrollments? Um, probably, you know, I don't know. If we'll probably filter this down to to one semester. So um, I don't know. Your guys' goal for the year is probably going to be much different than mine. But oh, come on. 250. Um, with my demo and the limited data, I'm just going to put 250. Uh, next. Da -da -da. Come on. Uh, so fewer options with a chart report than a gauge, but it does have a bunch of different things for you to, to play with. Um, uh, min value, well, the goal. You probably, you might want to see maybe max value you'd want to see uh, just in case you go over your goal. Maybe you want to see a little bit extra. Uh, you can set that uh, that max value a little bit higher. Um, show goal marker. Uh, why did it put it down to zero? Um, yeah, I think part of it's going to be I need to preview it to, for that to to move to the proper location. But anyway, you could set some values here. Um, ticks, if you want to, probably go a little bit. Um, you know, have have it a little less messy. Um, Ten, I think, isn't too bad. You can have it really messy and go up to twenty. Um, so that's definitely not good, but anyway, it's whatever your choice is. Um, minor tick counts in between three per major. Um, I don't know what, what, what makes sense, but, uh, sure. I'll leave it there. Um, background, you can do some different things with the background and some of the sizing. Okay. Let's get to a filter. Uh, so let's get, again, course code begins with, I um, think that makes the most sense for this type. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Begins with, I'm blind, 21. I'm going to hard code to this. You can ask at runtime, especially for different semesters, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hard code it uh, for this. Um, webinar and preview okay there's our tick mark over here kind of 250 i don't know where it is but right now we're sitting on 159 um, registrations in my demo uh out of the 250 well we're uh almost at the end of august so that's probably not looking good for us hitting unless i've got some really good um um uh, courses coming up this fall that's going to bring in a bunch of people. Uh, we're probably lagging a little bit behind in enrollments, but uh, anyway, that's that's kind of the purpose of the gauge is where are you at as far as a, a goal? Maybe your your dean has a financial goal, not an enrollment goal, so you'd want to use uh, financials, and we'll find out more about financials. Uh, in two weeks, but um, anyway, whatever you're wanting to see visually, um, this thing can do. And let's see, I'm going to, yeah, um, I think I'm good there. Uh, any questions over gauges? I know that was pretty quick, but it's very nope. similar to charts. Nope. Okay. Finish that. Now, I've got some charts going on here, some different things. So the next thing I'm going to create is a dashboard. A dashboard is a um, a dashboard, according to the report wizard, is multiple chart blah, multiple charts in one view. So enrollment, I've been basically doing nothing but enrollments. So we'll make this the enrollments dashboard. 
oh, because I can't name the same thing, uh, enrollments dashboard, how about that? There we go. Okay, so now it's, instead of me picking fields out of the database, I'm picking reports. So go to my, um, and notice that the, the by course code is filtered out or is grayed out because it's it's basically because of the the query it can't you can't grab that uh so i'm gonna have the dashboard added and course enrollments by subject um notice you can set the refresh this is so how often do you want the data in the report refreshed? Every 10 seconds seems like overkill to me, but I don't know. You guys, that, that's up to you guys. I think once a minute, maybe, um, can you set it to 3,600? 3,600. Yeah, so you could set it, 3,600 would be 60 times 60, one hour uh, in seconds. So every hour, this would update. Well, for my demo purposes, I'm going to have it do 10 seconds because I'm going to show something. Okay, automatic number of columns. Yes, that's fine. Create shortcut. So this would allow me to bypass the report wizard entire, entirely. Uh, so, and I can also have it not require a login. It's automatically checked to create a shortcut and not require a login. Why? Because then you could put this on the Dean's desk, this shortcut. He doesn't have to log in, or she, he or she doesn't have to log in, and they run this dashboard and they can see what's going on. So they can answer, you know, they don't have to come running to you. Hey, how are we doing on enrollments? They can just pull up the dashboard themselves and see it. Um, I don't know if there's, yeah, so security, the, that's pretty much it with, with setting up a dashboard. The, these major things, really just this step two. So if I go to preview now, so it's brought up my two, eh, let's blow this up. Whoa, okay, refresh, there we go. Um, had a refresh issue with that. So it's it's showing you, um, so every 10 seconds it refreshes, but also every time you hit refresh, it's going to refresh the report. Um, so it's got that capability. Uh, so we're sitting at 159 registrations over here, and da -da -da. come on, see how uh, you can't see what I'm doing on my other screen, but voila, 167, it just jumped up eight registrations, because hey, I just registered eight people in another course over here on my other screen. So. Uh, this is showing you live look at your data. Well, live as of every 10 seconds, but it's uh, fairly, fairly live, um, showing you the representation of the data. Of course, my demo isn't going to change that often, so that's why I'm thinking once an hour would be a lot better for my purposes, but you guys can, can do what you need to um, with dashboards. All right, any questions over dashboards? I'm not seeing any, but I think that's very cool. That real live time data reporting is cool. I love the yep. images that you can use in your annual reports for stakeholders and things. That's really cool. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Uh, I know one question I have is we set this chart over here, the course enrollment by subject. To, to be a linked chart. So what happens if I try to, to pull up one of these 
slices. It's going to run it outside of the dashboard. It still allows me to click on a slice, but it pulls it up into a, its its a chart window instead of uh, uh, the dashboard. So that's I don't know. I guess I mean it's it's doing what I want. It's just maybe not quite within the dashboard. But um, one thing I haven't shown is outputting. You can just like the um, uh, quick reports, you can output these to a million different um, ways. Um, PDF, I think, is probably good. Your images, your you know, since these are charts, images is going to be good. You can put it into, you can get the raw data from it still, just like you would a quick report. Although I think, you know, the, the power of the chart is having it in a picture. So image or PDF, uh, I think is going to be your, your big things here. Um, you can, let's see. So this is outputting. You can email the report just like a quick report. Um, I don't have grouping, so it didn't allow me to select the grouping stuff. Um, or you could print right out to the printer. So, um, yeah, all sorts of good stuff here. And you can see, every, you, you know, this this is blinking every once in a while. It's still doing those those 10 second refresh. Now it quit blinking. Now that I pointed it, oh, there it goes. There it blinks. Uh, so every time it's blinking, that's when it's doing a uh, refresh of the data. So uh, closing dashboard, finish. Okay, let's see, chart, did that, did that, right? Gauge, dashboards, chart. Um, um. Oh no, I'm missing my notes. Um, because we got 12 minutes or so. I was gonna try, let's see, do, oh, ah. Sorry, I know I've, there was something else with charting I wanted to cover, but now I can't, okay. Where did I do? While you're thinking, I will remind people that sometimes the best way to really try this out and come up with your questions is to actually put some hands on this, and you can do that for free. We can get you a license to this for you to try for 90 days, and then you can try these things Matthew's doing and come up with your questions and see what you think. Um, so no charge to test drive it. Okay. I remembered what I wanted to do. There okay, so this is um, uh, da, 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 enrollments by date. So if, of course, go back to course. Um, no, we're not going to want to do course because I want to see how many registrations are coming in on a particular date. So I'm going to go to register. Registration. So this would be where I want to count registrations. So SSN ID is probably the best. I, I, I choose the key field that I want to be counted. In this case, I want names, the numbers, and the link from on the register table is the SSN ID. And then I want add date. Um, okay, so next we're gonna have this be a bar chart. See, this is where it got confused and it put my SSN ID in the wrong place. So we're gonna put add date along the bottom. SSN ID, if I hover, 
come on, hover, come back here. So it's automatically saying, yes, we want to count this. It's not going to try to sum because it's a character field. It can't sum a character field. Add date. Now this is where things get interesting. If I preview this right now, it's going to have every single add date I have registrations, and it's going to show them along the bottom. That's going to go on for pages, uh, especially since I don't have a filter. But what really I want to do, maybe I don't want every single date. Maybe I want to show on week or month. Let's do month. Month. Wait. So the difference between month and month year. So that would be month, all the January registrations, all the February. But it would be across every single year. So if you were running this for multiple years, all the January registrations would show up in one bar across each year. Month year would do January 2020 in, in one bar, you know, February all the way through the end of 2020, and then January of 2021 be in the next bar. Uh, add missing date values. This is a demo. I'm going to have probably some months where I have zero. Um, you guys probably not, but anyway, that's up to you guys as far as you want to do that. All right. So that's kind of, that's new. Uh, I'm going to, with a bar chart, you've got the options of doing cylinders, pyramids, cones or just regular rectangles with with 3d off rectangles and cylinders are the same it's only when you turn on the 3d and and start you know pushing this in deeper that you start getting um cylinders and same thing you know pyramids and cones yeah uh, so to each their own um, I really don't care about 3D, so just a flat bar chart. I am, though, I hate the pastels, so I'm going to do my cool colors. Default theme, switch this to business, so I get that nice kind of grayish background and things like that. So anyway, uh, that's just playing around with the chart. Filter. Um, well, I, heck, let's not even put a filter on it. Preview. So this has put it across 13 pages. Every single from August 2019 on through, when are there registrations in the demo? Um, so you could see big months, June 2020, August 2020, June 2021, August 2021. Hmm, June and August seem, oh, wait, we don't have anything in 2022. Uh-oh, wait, why is it keep going into the future? Oh, because I have in the demo some date registered of August of 2028. I don't know why. That's bad data. Oh, and in August of 2029, that's also bad data. But anyway, <laughs> assuming we've got good data, um, we'll do that. But let's do, I want to just see enrollments over a year. And your guys' year, to me, a year starts on January. But uh, most of you probably are going to want it ju July through June. Um, so I'm going to add a filter. And this time, registration add date, because it's the first field in register, automatically put me there. Hey, it's exactly what I want, um, is between two values. This I'm going to ask at runtime because I think that's going to change fairly often. Um, you can type. You, there is a drop down to to do a calendar. Um, so I'm going to do the calendar picking for this one. Uh, January 1st of 2021. And through, and I'm going to type the second one, 12-31-2021. Give me one, one year to show on my bar chart preview. 
it's asking me it, notice it so the, the what you've entered before is kind of the default values um, so you can change it here it's not going to change the defaults uh, for other people so maybe you were only wanting to show uh, half of a year instead of the full year but I'm gonna go ahead and do the full year um, one thing I see is a problem well I don't know it's not necessarily a problem but it's gone ahead and still split this among two pages except page two is November and December so again that's kind of the pagination thing over here on other points per page I want to see a full year okay there we go bar chart showing me per month how many registrations I'm getting that might be another thing your dean wants to see in the dashboard so let's add it to the dashboard finish am i going to be able to add add it to the dashboard and the answer is no well for one thing it's not even showing but because i have the filter on it it's not going to show in the dashboard um hold on i lost it what did i do did i cancel out of that okay or did i save it it went somewhere didn't it yes it went up here um so I need to webinar 2021 finish. There we go. Now edit and it's not going to show. It's going to show, but it's going to be grayed out because it has a filter. So so that's the the one thing you've got to consider when when making your reports do you want do you absolutely need that ask at runtime or not um and especially if i want you know the dean wants to run this or whoever wants to run this uh on their dashboard uh you're you'll have to do some date manipulation and I hope to get into date manipulation here in two weeks because that's going to be part of the advance. So I've kind of gone basic, basic at the beginning of the webinar and switched into more intermediate here by the end of this webinar. Next time it's going to be fairly advanced. We are going to do a couple basic things, but uh, hope, hopefully I'll be able to get into fairly advanced stuff. Uh, by the end of that webinar. So Perfect. join us, join us in two weeks because that's going to be. Thank you, be Matthew, for showing us how to email data, schedule data to be emailed and how to do visualizations of the data that we have. That's what you covered today. And next time, as Matthew said, and this is on September 8th, believe it or not, we'll be into September by that time, where he'll show some advanced functionality of using the report wizard. You know where to find us if you have questions in the meantime or want to schedule a test drive of the report wizard. Until then, have a great rest of the afternoon and the upcoming weekend. We'll be here soon. Enjoy that as well. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Matthew. Bye-bye now. Bye.